Rediscover your past by digitizing your family's memories with Legacy Box. Watch until the end of this video to find out more about preserving your legacy, and then visit LegacyBox.com recollection. Frosty was a root beer brand that began in 1939. The popular drink had a creamy, smooth flavor and was marketed with the slogan, it's a frosty day when you enjoy frosty root beer. As the drive-in revolution occurred in the 1950s, the Frosty Company got into the fast food business by acquiring a chain of drive-ins called Stewart's and later the Dog and Suds chain. Frosty was eventually purchased by Monarch Beverage and the root beer began to decline. Monarch also owned Dad's Root Beer, so they would put most of their promotional efforts behind Dad's and left Frosty to fade into obscurity. Tab was a diet cola introduced by Coca-Cola in the 1960s. The drink was the first diet drink offered by Coke and was marketed towards women who were looking to lose weight. But following the introduction of Diet Coke in the 1980s, Tab's production was scaled back. This created a cult-like following over the next couple decades, but the soda was officially discontinued in 2020. Pepsi's Aspen was a short-lived soda brand that was introduced in the mid-1970s. The drink was an apple-flavored soda that was marketed as a refreshing alternative to traditional cola drinks, and it was aimed at younger consumers. Aspen was known for its bright green packaging and its unique crisp flavor. The soda did gain a small following, mostly in the western United States, but it was phased out by Pepsi in the early 1980s due to declining sales. Seven Up Gold was a spicy soda introduced by the Dr. Pepper Company in 1988. The drink had a unique flavor, with notes of cinnamon and caramel, and the spicy drink was marketed with the tagline, Never had it, never will, referring to caffeine. The only problem was, it did contain caffeine. The confusion that came with Seven Up selling a dark-colored caffeinated drink not only led to low sales, but it also led to its eventual cancellation in 1989. In 1985, Coca-Cola introduced a new formula for its flagship drink, and it was called New Coke. The new formula instantly did not sit well with longtime customers, who preferred the original formula. The backlash was swift and very strong, leading Coca-Cola to bring back its original formula within months. Coca-Cola Classic was how they rebranded the original formula, and the failed New Coke was discontinued immediately. Slice was a fruit-flavored soda introduced by Pepsi in 1984, and it was competing against the likes of 7-Up and Sprite. The drink was advertised as a healthier alternative to regular soda, and it came in a variety of flavors, including orange, grape, and the original flavor lemon-lime. The fruity drink maintained it had 10% fruit juice, but over time, that was downgraded to just contains fruit juice. By 2000, Slice was being replaced by the more popular Sierra Mist brand, and a few years later, it was gone completely. The Quirst line of soft drinks was introduced by 7-Up in the late 1980s as a response to the growing popularity of non-cola sodas, especially fruit-flavored ones. Quirst included a variety of refreshing flavors that were geared towards younger consumers, which also included some diet versions. Despite an aggressive marketing campaign, Quirst wasn't that successful, and it would be discontinued by the early 1990s. Jolt Cola was a highly caffeinated drink that was introduced in 1985. The drink was marketed as an energy booster, and therefore became very popular with college students through the 1990s. As energy drinks became the hottest new trend, Jolt found itself fighting for market share against a sea of competitors. The drink that used the slogan, all the sugar and twice the caffeine, would eventually begin to use the name Jolt Energy as they moved away from soft drinks to focus primarily on energy drinks. In 2009, the company went bankrupt, 
But ever since, speculation has been growing that Jolt Cola will try and make a comeback. Crystal Pepsi was a clear, caffeine-free cola launched by Pepsi in the early 1990s, and it was supposed to be a healthier alternative to regular Pepsi. This was a time when everything was going clear, as it was thought to be more pure and better for us. Despite the hype and marketing push behind Crystal Pepsi, the drink just didn't sell, and by 1994, the last remaining bottles were sold, as the brand was discontinued. Surge was a citrus-flavored soda launched by Coca-Cola in 1996, and it was meant to compete with Mountain Dew. The drink was popular with teenagers, and maybe it was just a little ahead of its time as it preceded the competitive gaming era that Mountain Dew has capitalized on so successfully. By 2003, the edgy drink with low sales was on the way out, but there have been periodic re-releases within test markets that would bring a smile to any hardcore Surge fan. Orbitz was a non-carbonated fruit-flavored beverage produced in 1997 by the Clearly Canadian Beverage Corporation that resembled a lava lamp. It was notable for its unique appearance, featuring small, colorful balls suspended in its clear liquid. Orbitz came in several flavors and was marketed as a texturally enhanced alternative beverage that was only popular among young people for a very short time. Despite the initial success, sales began to fall, which led to its eventual discontinuation. But there have been rumors that it might be re-released in a limited run. OK Soda was a short-lived soda brand introduced by Coca-Cola in 1993 that targeted Gen X. The drink had a unique, minimalist marketing campaign with the slogan, Things are going to be OK. From the start, OK Soda wasn't really about the soda, and it utilized various can designs along with unusual marketing efforts to reach young people. OK just didn't resonate with consumers, and within a year, it was discontinued. Pepsi Blue was a blue-colored soda introduced by Pepsi in 2002. The drink that was promoted by Britney Spears, among others, had a berry fusion flavor that was aimed at teenagers. The drink was even promoted at New York Mets games during the 2002 baseball season, but it just never caught on. By 2004, Pepsi discontinued the drink following two years of lower-than-expected sales. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything, and maybe even consider supporting the channel over on Patreon. Recollection Road has partnered with Legacy Box because we're both all about preserving the past. Why not do the same with your own family home movies and photos? Legacy Box is the simple, safe, they've thought of everything solution for converting your home movies and photos to thumb drive or the cloud. Just send in your legacy box filled with old VHS and camcorder tapes, film reels, and pictures, and get back digital copies that can be easily enjoyed, shared, and kept organized. It's that easy. Not only is Legacy Box trusted by over 1 million people, but it's professionally digitized right here in the USA. Get started preserving your past today. Go to LegacyBox.com recollection to get an incredible 55% off. Buy today to take advantage of this exclusive offer and send in your memories when you're ready. Go to LegacyBox.com recollection to save 55% while supplies last. If you enjoyed this video, consider watching this playlist, and then visit the channel to search the Recollection Road Library. As always, thank you so much for watching.